101.9 iHeartRadio, Bobby Simmons is still in the building. And guess who I got in the building with me right now? I mean, we, we've been going down the line of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the publishing of the work of this young lady. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you, it's the one and only Sweet T is in the building. What's up, Sweet T? Hey, what's up? <laughs> it is so good to see you. It's been so long since, uh, well, you know, we catch up with each other. But I am so happy to see you. You look wonderful. You look gorgeous. But thank you. You're doing your thing. And um, a lot of people don't know. They need to know. I know I'm happy that you actually have new music out. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But first of all, how are you doing? Because we're going through this whole pandemic. How are you holding up in this? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, as as people probably saw on my um, Instagram, I did go through COVID. I was... Um, you know, I was frightened at first, but it was more asymptomatic. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't get really, really sick, but, you know, it was scary just to know that you had it. And then every day you, like, wait for it because you don't know what is going to happen because it was, you know, so unknown, if it, you know, because I caught it near the beginning, you know? So, but, you know, I'm good. All right, well, I'm, <laughs> like I said, you look good, and we're glad that – um. You, uh, you recovered, and you recovered very well. And um, and you've just been, a lot of people have been talking about you. Now, I know, because we know each other, that, you know, you've been, you know, dipping and dodging, doing some things. But there was a lot of people that asked, like, uh, through the iHeart um, radio page, they said, well, whatever happened to her? And I'm like, well, she's still out there. And you've been pretty much invisible. Uh, the one thing I am proud of that I would like to talk about to let everybody know about you is that you actually took the time to, um, you didn't give up music. You just took the time to say, you know what, there's other things I need to finish up. And one of those things was you went back to school. Um, please tell us a little bit about that. I am so proud of you, but I want you to tell it so they can know what you have been up to since you've been invisible for a minute with school. Well, like you said, I've always been doing shows. So, you know, my peers told me a lot, you know, like, it's just that like the old school shows aren't like on the radio, but you know, we still were out there, you know, I'm still out there working, but I did want to go to school. I okay. did want to finish school. And um, I, I'm actually an assistant director of a drug treatment program. Okay. So, uh, um, you know, when you're around that kind of spirit and those kind of um, um, educated people that, you know, work in that field, it, it, they, they give you, I don't know, encouragement, like to, like you need a degree. Like you go walk in people's offices and you see degrees on the wall and it's like, you know, <laughs> I need one of those, you know? I need one of those right there. So, you know, I made a decision. I went back to school and it was, it was very enlightening. It was very enlightening. And it was everything my mother said it was going to be when I should have went when I was younger, you know? Right, now, 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 now that you have said that, uh, was it challenging for you to go later than earlier? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I went to a, a good school that kind of um, their order is that it's an adult school and they know that, you know, you have to, you have life first, you have a job and you have school. You know, it would have been a different kind of pressure when I was younger and I went to like, a, a, you know, a college that, the you know, you're two minutes late, the doors are locked, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> you, you, you're going to miss the whole class if you're like two minutes late, you know, and it, I'm sure it just would have been a different set of pressures, you right. know, right. but um, I had a good time. I, it was hard. You know, I had to put a lot of things down to get through it, you know, but I did. And it, it was a, it was a great experience. Well, you definitely did. And I remember calling you congratulating you because you was on your way to your graduation. And I was like, <laughs> congratulations. Honestly, you know, I was very, very proud. Because I watch you go, it's like you was going through, you know, the trenches to get to where you wanted to go, but also still holding it down to, uh, to, to continue to do music. Now, yeah. uh, now, for people who don't know, a lot of you people, because who, who, you're new to a lot of people, you know, because you have new music out. We can talk, we're going to talk about that too in a minute. But you're new to a lot of people, but a lot of your peers and people from the, from the you know, the golden era of hip hop, a lot of y'all know her as Sweet Tea from DJ Jazzy Joyce. And, um, and Sweet Tea, they had a record out called It's My Beat. And she wound up doing an album uh, where she did a, a smooth tip. And uh, you was produced by uh, the legendary Herbie Lovebug. 
Um, mm-hmm. Tell us, tell us about real quick about those beginnings. You know, during the Latin Quarter days, those were like the golden era of where hip hop was. It was being built. Uh, yeah, we had no clue that it was going to be built this big today. But tell us a little bit about your 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 you know introducing yourself to that golden um, era of hip hop. Wow, I mean, there was so many levels to get, you know, before I got to Herbie, right. you know what I mean? And all along when we were like doing what we were doing, like it was it was work, but it was fun, you know? And we were just, we were just doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you was there, we were just doing it. We, we were just like, yo, we got a show. I need a rope chain, yeah, exactly. you know, let's be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Need a new pair of, of Nikes, cause I got a show, you know? But it was um wow and when i look back on it it's just it was it was it's, i can't even i can't even describe it you just I, yeah you can't, can't replace that with anything oh, you nobody can. it's it's never gonna happen again right right exactly you know what i'm saying never gonna happen again nobody's gonna be able to repeat that right you know the things we went through yes. you know nobody can say oh i know what you went through no you don't right. you know yeah. and you never will yeah. But it was, it was great. It and, was great. And, and it's funny that you even say that, that that would never be repeated again, because we're looking at the change in hip hop today. And of course, a lot of people, you know, give certain female MCs, a, you know, a hard time. And, and, and you were one of them who was coming through the trenches with a lot of them, from the Salt and Pepper to the um, Queen Latifahs and the MC Light. Y'all, y'all actually paved the way, but y'all had a hard time because you had to go up against men, which was at the time was being dominated in hip hop. But you know, you stood your ground. What do you see or even think about? Um, no particular rapper in mind. Just there's a few female MCs out there. What do you think about the direction that uh, female, I guess you could say rappers, or I don't know if you could say MCs, um, are going today? Do you think it looks good? Or do you just think it's just not being molded um, the way that you think or you, you, it should look? Well, for me, it's not about what I expect it to be. You know, I did what I did and I'm doing what I'm doing. And just like when we were, you know, in any point in rap history, there was a whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of different things. Right. You know, we could be over here talking about this and, um, you know, um, the West Coast is like, bitch, better have my money. And right, Luke right. Skywalker's like, yo, pop that booty. You right. know what I mean? So there was, Everybody was different at living a different kind of life and it came through in their music. And this is what they're doing now. And, you know, some people don't like it or, or you know, or, or have um, issue or opinion about it, but nobody could tell us now when we were talking about what we wanted to talk about. Right. You know, you might not like the content, well, don't listen to it. But, you know, it, it's, it's just, the world is different and so their content is different. What they're right. experiencing is different, so they're talking about it what they're experiencing. And that's what we did, yeah, but, you know, so. Okay, I, and I agree with you, but but let me just, you know, for safeness for, uh, for other people, to play devil's advocate, I think the difference between us was mm-hmm. that um, we, we were very creative in our poetry though. We knew that we could talk about, what, like we did sex songs, you had Latoya, you had Lottie Dottie, but we was also versatile in our poetry. That wasn't our only, we didn't stay in particularly in that zone where you know, we was going to talk about, you know, hoes or pimps or, you know, it was like we were, we was versatile with our art so that mm-hmm. people see that we're not just only more about this. So you're absolutely right, though. It was a different time. We were doing our thing, but we also wanted to show our creativity as poets because that's what we were doing back then. That's what hip hop was about, your poetry and how you can deliver it mm-hmm. and speak it, you know, to the masses of, of the young people. And we, we pretty much conquered that and covered that. But real quick, I want to mention, too, because at a time, in hip hop, uh, where it was changing. You had the Wu-Tang, you had the Onyx, everybody was coming out. And it almost seemed like you disappeared, but you didn't. You returned back, but you returned back like Prince. You came back with a whole nother name. You came back as Sugar, and you had a hit record out called What's Up Star. And um, what made you make that transition that you wasn't gonna be Sweet Tea anymore, and you became this new artist? Cause that, that was a new artist. For a lot of people, yeah. sugar. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I started just AKAing on a couple of songs that I had, you know, you know, 
Jay Z has like twelve names in his records. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you know, you 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 branch out and start giving yourself AKAs and so on. And what what happened was Jam Master Jay got my demo, mm. and the sugar thing has a whole different meaning than what you think. Now, what happened was when Jay wanted to get sign me to Def Jam, he didn't want to tell people that the records they were listening to were from me. Okay. Because people at that point were being slightly, I guess you want to say for lack of better words, judgmental of the old school. Right. So yeah. they did not, he did not want to tell people that it was me on these songs. Mm. He said, oh, let me just see, let me test the waters with the song. And so since I was saying sugar in the song, mm. he played them, he played them for Russell. And Russell's like, yo, I like it, you know, I want to, um, let me see her, just whatever. So he said, meet me at the Time Cafe, bring her. So we met downtown at the Time Cafe. And when I walked in and Russell saw it was me, he just started to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jay, um, Jay, he came up and then, you know, Russell was like, hmm, nice coat. You know, I got this leather jacket on. So he opened it up, and of course, you know, I was I was all right underneath the coat, you know. So he was like, sign her, you know. <laughs> so that's how that went. But then, you know, we did sugar, we, you know, did the pictures. However, the fans didn't. Uh, it didn't work. Hmm. It it didn't work. So why do you think it um, didn't work? We, we what, what, went. I went on the road. People looked at the picture. You know, that's when you have like all the giveaway pictures. Uh huh. And they said, Can you please sign my picture, Sweet Tea? Oh, okay. So there's like a whole load of people that were Sweet Tea fans that took that picture mm -hmm. and said, Can you sign it, Sweet Tea? So I wasn't signing a lot of those pictures or autographs as Sugar because that it wasn't, that even though they accepted the song and was happy to see me, that it didn't. They didn't realize they, they they more identify with sweet tea than absolutely than with sugar. Well, and like, and I mean, like, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know that's henceforth why I'm back. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't keep propelling on. You know, the the deal with Jay, of course, everything. Um, you know, Jay ended up separating from Def Jam, and just you know, I ended up severing from the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But um, um, from the experience, I was like, let me stop playing with my fans. Right, right, right. <laughs> let's let's. <laughs> Let's you know not do that. So, right. well, I mean, it was it was a great transition. And, and second of all, yeah, I liked. I kind of liked it. It was yeah. a little fresh thing, but you know, to get on the road, they're like, you know, could you please sign my picture, sweet tea? Like, yeah, some slightly annoyed. You know, <laughs> I was like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> well, you was able to cater to them, and, and and it showed you that the fans still had love for you and this new work you were doing. But it's like, nah, I'd rather sweet tea than sugar because you know, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of the work. And this is, even though this song is says artist sugar, this is still Sweet Tea's work. Exactly. So, That's exactly what was happening. Right. So mm -hmm. please sign it. And, 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 you know, real quick, speaking about Jam, Mr. J, how do you feel knowing now that his murder is, has now be, have been solved um, with the killers? I'm sad that it took so long, but, you know, it closure is everything. Right. You know? Right. Well, I mean, I know a lot of people is definitely happy about it. And I wanted to ask you that because, you know, your relationship, like you just said, working with him, he signed you to his, his a JMJ company and put out the What's Up song, which was a part of the, um, what was that movie? The soundtrack movie. Um, the show. The show, movie soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And um, and it took off. But, um, and then you disappeared again. So we already got to that. But now, Sweet Tea returns back with new music. Now, I've heard it, and we're going to hear it too in a little bit. Um, it's a, it's a whole new thing again with you. Um, how do you find yourself staying relevant with the changes in hip hop and music today? Because it's a, it's another change uh, that you go through. First of all, let everybody know the name of the song too. For, tell them the title of the song. I Ain't Doing Love. I Ain't Doing Love. Yes. And, um, it's a whole nother thing. How do you feel? Do you think this still fits into the, uh, the Sweet Tea um, range of body of work or are you again trying to revolve at uh, trying something new to reach to a different audience i am working on the most edgiest mix of that mm -hmm. that that could 
I mean, every song. I'm actually working with Pudgy the Fat Bastard. Right. Big and up. actually, yeah, actually, you know, once I leave here, he's tapping his feet at the studio waiting for me to get there tonight. Okay. So, um. <laughs> so um, he, um, he is amazing. Mm. And we take a, a part and talk about and, and, and work on every song. Right. Um, and as far as talking about me staying relevant is I never stopped going in the studio hmm. all of this time. Right. I have, you know, two key people in my life. One was um, Freddie Fox, Bumpy Knuckles. Right. And um, E52 from Uptown. Hmm. Both of these guys, like, they just recorded with me and recorded with me and just recorded with me over the years, like, continuously. We just continue to record. And I would just go in, make some songs, and then, you know, I might fade out and stop. But... I always kept evolving my craft because it's something that's in me, something that I love. Right. And, you know, I used to always work. I mean, sometimes Freddie used to lock me in the studio and say, okay, yeah, I'll be back and there better be a song written. You better right, be right, ready. Right. And, you know, I used to get challenged and he used to give me beats and say, yo, you better write this. And we would just stay working. So I never stopped recording. Well, that's good. So it wasn't um, this big thing where I had to, you know, oh my God, let me brush off the dust and get in the studio. I never start recording. Right. I could probably play like a 40, 50, 60 records that I've done over the time. Wow. You know? And, th and th th that helps you regroup to either fix it or move on to another song? Is, you know, uh -huh. Does that help you fix moving on to another song? Because I mean, writing and being in the studio for so long and writing so much songs, you, you have to narrow yourself down to like, okay, I'm ready. This I know this is me uh, molding a Sweet Tea album, you know? Because, yeah. You know, because, I mean, we're, we're still in a single age again because this is digital. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, but just molding, your, you know, again, your sound and to make mm -hmm. sure you're not piggybacking everybody else. Because that's, that's the last thing you want to do is piggyback everybody else, especially when, right. you, when you've been in this game long enough to be like, hey, I've made changes. I can make changes again. Y'all... I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna follow y'all, you know, either ride with me or follow me. But I'm right. not gonna follow y'all. And um, I know I am one very, very happy that um, you have stayed in the studio. Um, you are still continuing to working on stuff. And I'm gonna let you go ahead and get in the studio with Pudgy the Fat Bastard. And um, I know me particularly, um, I love the song. Um, I, I'm glad that you're going in the direction that you're going into. I would like to hear more stuff though, so please, Oh, I will send. We have we have quite a few songs done. Mm -hmm. We're trying to just bang out this fall season. We did a lot of we did a lot of COVID writing back and forth, and now we're just starting to you know record more and get a lot of things done. So I got an array of songs, mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty happy with these songs. I am. No, well, then that, that that's all that matters. If you're happy, and I need and I need to put you on the spot. You know, because you know, Bobby Sim is the greatest drummer in the world in hip hop. Like, yes, yes. We must, we must be on the stage somewhere at some point. At well, some you time. got me, and 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 I'm 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 gonna say this to the audience because usually when I do interviews, I, I kind of keep it, you know, just what it is interview. But I, I'm I'm gonna have to say this because me and Toy, I, I said, well, that's her name for those who are probably freaking out. Um, me, sweet tea, we go back. And yeah. uh, we talked about a lot of things. And one of the things I did talk about with you is having like a, a stripped down band on there, rocking that whole hip hop and you, you know, combining the two. And I'm gonna tell you now, as I told you then, whenever you're ready, don't even worry about it. Schedules, even if schedule is crazy, you are my peoples and we go back. We've always had a great friendship and um, I'm there. My answer will never ever be no to you. Whenever you want to make it happen, there's no, such thing, there's no such thing as, hey, you think you can... No, there's no, hey, give me the date. I will bounce it all, and we will make it all happen because you're one true person. Even to this interview today, you call me, hey, B, can't do it this day, but I do it this day. That shows true loyalty. So speaking on what you just said, don't even worry about it. You got me. <laughs> we got it on tape. We got it on tape, ladies and gentlemen. On tape. <laughs> oh, you got me. But I ain't doing love. It's out there right now. People can actually purchase it on it's on on the digital platforms. Um, they could purchase it, correct? The, yes, the videos on YouTube. Right. Uh, my Instagram and all my social social media. And that is, is um, Sweetie the MC. 
Okay. Is that for both Instagram and Facebook? Yes. Okay, good. And everybody can go on and please everyone purchase it. Purchasing digital singles a day is nothing. Show the love, get the numbers up. This is a great woman here, a great friend of mine, and I'm all support. And we're going to make sure that we make this I Ain't Doing Love um, record move. We want to see some numbers move, and we're going to see to it that that happen. Um, I love you. I think you, I, you know, I know love you, you too. You're a fantastic person. Um, Thank you. We're going to see to that all this thing happens for you, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us here. And um, we're going to catch up with you because we know you got more to share with us. So I'm going to be a bother. So expect my phone call. That's it. I'm there for you. I'm, there for, I'm there for everybody else. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah, I hear you. No disrespect to everybody else. But when you see Bobby name show up <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> yes, Bobby. Pick it up. <laughs> yes, Bobby. But I thank you so much. And um, we're going to talk some more. I Ain't Doing Love is out there right now. Show you love. We're going to play it too. So y'all give a listen to this. Sweet tea, thank you so much. We're going to catch up with you, all right? Yes. All right, then. Everybody don't move nowhere. We got music coming up. The Bobby Simmons Show. Don't disappear. Check it! <laughs>